the and my father said to me, go to the west side of the house and burn that piece of wood. <laughs> and I just could not figure that out the world. I went to that and I said, Dad, what's, what's the west side? Do you want me to go to her side or the left side? I don't know what it was. His left arm was right hand, but I didn't know what I got inside my head. <laughs> so, you know what I did? I went to, uh, I think it was, I just started to go to what they call Sun Junior. Some of you all know about that. Some, some of you are. And Sun Junior 17. So, I saw a bunch of ladies, she had this little toy and stuff. And the first thing I recognized was a small little compass. There was one like a little keychain. Oh, and I purchased that. And I take that home on the road to school, and I practice with that. No? <laughs> west, east, south. I even got in northwest, northeast. So, <laughs> you know, I begged my dad to tell me whether it was left or right, but couldn't have, couldn't have. Get that in my um, class. Say class. Yeah. Bring the bring the monitor number one and put it there. That's probably just not made it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that kind of had me laughing over there. Everybody's wondering why I was laughing. That's what I was laughing about. You know, I had quite an experience growing up with my father. You know, being pretty stern. The situation is, in those days, if you happen to be the oldest child, you have trouble on your hand. Yeah. You know, and um, on behalf of the family, I didn't really put anything together because, you know, when I learned I was on the program, and Shanta said, Isn't your name here? That was uh, just before I arrived at 7 this afternoon. So I said, I didn't know that he dropped over on me again. Because he didn't know I probably would have said no. <laughs> so, you know, I said, um, I told what I was trying to say was that I'm a big the oldest one, you tend to get, you know, whatever the service to is lies on you. I remember being home and my father went out and sometimes I didn't know what my sister, my younger sister, or my younger brother did. Sometimes it's not recognized and tell that my father and my mother reach. And now I have to answer to that. So it's like being a supervisor or manager. You got to answer for everybody else. You're a child. So my whole life, I've been in that sort of predicament. So you know, like that, that let me have to make sure that the first time she can get, get some freedom, find a coin, you can do that. Feel like the bird just get free. You know, so, and the thing about it is, is we sort of, uh, you know, we just have a little distance. The love is always there. You know, and uh, the thing about it is that sometimes I always tell my younger spin brother stuff. I said, now before you disrespect my dad, you don't know what to say to him, whatever, I said, keep your distance. Walk off, don't say anything. So I have to be the one who always be able to say, look, you know, you have to understand that. And they thought I didn't understand in a lot of ways, but I, I understand where he's coming from because I had to adopt a lot of the training that I got from my dad. Even though I was very young when um, we, we got married and started to have kids. But if you look at the situation where my kids are today and the way they grow up, you will realize that I am a mess with my You know, because I was taught. I always say to people of my job and stuff, if you're being taught, you can teach. I don't care how old you are. If, you, if you're 50 years old and you haven't been taught, you can't teach nobody. Amen. You know? So, and even now to the grand, my grand, the sister grands and everybody, I find myself encouraging them. And some of them who are fathers or the, you know, their father and grandfather, I'm saying to them, encouraging them, I said, now, your father will walk this path. I know as you're going in that path, I need you to start praying and asking the Lord to change that destination. Because the situation is, is that it can change with you. You don't have to walk that path. So I found myself in a situation now, uh, sort of being sort of almost like the leader of the family. 
And I noticed my dad and I had a little talk the other day. And he said, I like that, you know, we need you to. So, uh, come on. You know, but, uh, but really, I just don't like to say too much. But I, um, I would just like to say that I want to encourage him in this, in, uh, in the retirement. My mom as well. She's always been there for me. My dad has always been there for me. He's always been uh, an inspiration. And I would just like to say that, um, you know, that all is well. All is well. And um, we are there for you. And uh, don't feel like uh, we forsake you or everything is stuck. It's not stuck. You're just going to be able to live now. You're just not going to have all this headache and all this pressure that you don't need at this age. So we're here, you know, and I'm here to also assist as much as I can. And that's what it's all about. So that, I want to thank you for being the father that you were to me and to all my siblings, also my kids and the grands, the great, great, great grands. Uh, we appreciate you, we always did, and uh, we know you know it. You know, check. Yeah, we know you, we know you understand that uh, we are here for you, so continue to be strong. And mom, you as well, because uh, you have done your part and you have been an inspiration to all of us. So again, be strong, and uh, anything you can be.